Good morning, YouTube. Okay, so this is the 1989 Suzuki um, Intruder 750. And um, I put a new battery in it, put a new air filter in it, and um, I really haven't done much to it. When I got the bike, um, the guy said it, it was sitting for a while. And uh, the inside of the tank was nice and clean. So I put some fresh gas in it to see how she would go. Uh, last time the bike was inspected was in 2013, which basically says, hey, I sat for a little bit. And I'm guessing it sat for most of 13. Um, the fuel that was in it was pretty stale. Um, but nevertheless, I put the uh, the key in it, which goes down bottom there, um, replaced the battery, and I got to run um, just on that. But there's no detent on the choke. It just wants to go back in like a pinball machine. And um, what do you call it there? And it didn't, it does not idle for shit. I mean, this thing will not idle. You basically have, um, you got to hold the clutch in to um, turn it over. I got the, it's a hydraulic clutch. I got that to work. Um, I put new brake pads in it. And now I got to mess around with the cobs. Um, there are two carburetors on this. You have to remove the fuel tank to get to one. And uh, the other one's down bottom now. On these fuel, on these carburetors, they have a vent hose coming off the front, just a vent hose for air. And um, you can plainly see, I don't think you see it or not. Let's see if I can expand it up a little bit. See the dirt in there? Right in there? I'm going to assume that there is a clog in that carburetor from that dirt. It actually looks like a nest, like a mouse, like a, not a mouse, I say, <laughs> a um, spider nest. So, uh, nevertheless, I got to yank the cobs and uh, clean them. One of the problems I had when I first put fuel to it, it was pumping up and, um, I'm going to put it back to running regular size. Um, I drained, there was fuel leaking out of this carburetor right here. This is the carburetor right here that was at uh, fault. And the engine was running okay on that cob. Um, but not on the second one here. So I took the air filter off to check it out. And this one was fine. That one had a mouse nest as you saw in one of my other videos. So what we're going to do today. Um, is I'm going to pull the cob rays today. And get these soaking in my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, I think that's going to be a big help. And I think it's going to benefit this uh, bike tremendously. Um, as far as running. And it went through all the gears. I had it running, it just would not idle, and it just happens to be that's on the idle circuit. So, coincidence? Hmm, no. That's the problem. So, we're going to yank these carburetors and uh, get these things soaking. I wanted to show you guys, if you have a Suzuki Intruder, the first thing you do is pop your seat and replace that air filter right there. But there's actually another one underneath the air filter and then they wonder why people are going to Harley Davidson hmm gee I wonder why air filter bursts here versus up underneath your fuel tank come on really under all the wiring and shit that's just a prick to get to the one I the seat's not too too bad but it's actually this is actually a nice setup it um we call it there it's a v-twin this was my brother has a springer and they put the exhaust on the same side. Technically, there's supposed to be one on the other side, but they put the dual on the one side. It's got the big wheel in the front with the with the single brake caliper, dual, um, dual piston. And they did the, um, what do you call it there? Yeah, they have it low cut. And they also did the ignition key down by the back side of your leg, like the old Harleys had. Um, copycats. So you can see right there the pipe that came around. And it's supposed to go through another pipe right there, but they took that off. Other than that, the bike is in pretty decent shape. And they put a different style headlight on. I thought this was pretty clever. They used a, um, just a uh, quarter inch block of, uh, or three inch block of uh, aluminum. And put a uh, crystal style headlight on there. It was pretty nice. Look, it does look good. I'll give them that. So yeah, that's pretty much this bike right here. So um, I gotta stop pulling these cobs off. What I'm gonna first start doing is removing the boots. And uh, we'll go from there. Let's see if I can find a screwdriver. I've got one right here on top of my trusty speaker bench. Alright, let's get that done. So we got two clamps on top. Oh, that was already loose. That wasn't even tight. We had some dirt going up. This one was loose too. Dirt ingestion. Alright, so I'm going to put that... I'm going to 
put that on the actual gear. Put that up there. Okay, so we look inside the carb. Not too bad. Fuel line right there, choke goes on the side. What a tolerance. It's craziness. Craziness. Choke cable comes over this way and divides into two cables, so all this can be pulled down right here through here. Yeah, this thing just this thing just beat. Beat like a like a bad, bad donkey. Alright, so I'm gonna pull the screw out here. If I can. Look at that. No fuel coming out of that cab. None. Clearly, there's an issue here. Clearly. It's been running on that car. This supply has a stock float. Um, it could be a number of things going on with it. So, we're going to find out what the hell is going on with it. Both of these, actually. Let's see if we can get a screw up underneath here. Where are you located? Can't really see stuff like this. Alright, and then See if we can't get that out. Oh yeah, that's in there. Get that loose as a goose. I'm undoing the clamp that holds the carburetor boot. To, uh, the carburetor to the boot. That's what I'm taking off right now. But I think these have been on there for so long. They're going to be uh, giving me a hard time. don't think this is going to be an easy one by any stretch. Let's see if we get this carburetor boot off here. Okay, it's holding on a clamp. Oh, even a clamp down bomb. Just got a uh, zip tie. Okay. This goes on the other side too. All right, let's see if we can get this lifted up. We'll do one at a time. Uh, oh, yeah, it's coming off easy now. I'm just prying gently. You don't want to go too high. You don't want to rip the boots. And you don't want to destroy any of the linkage. This uh, big hose right here with the spring is your fuel line. Okay, so. Uh, we got the fuel line to contend with. We're going to do this carburetor first. I think that other bottom carburetor might be okay. Um, that's an easy one to pull. A lot easier than this one. And, uh, let's see if we can get this. Yeah, this wiring. They got the wiring just wrapped really tight right around. They, they did. Whoever did this did a really, really bad job. Really bad job. Very disappointed in the way this job is on this one. Yeah, they got throttle screw almost all the way in. Look at this. This is awful. Shit's not even tight. Um, hmm. Oh, looks like it's going to need a secondary throttle cable. That goes down to, I see how they did that. Throttle cable goes into one. This is the main carburetor right here. Everything goes in here first. And then from here, it goes out to that one. Alright, so we got choke, throttle cables. And, um, what do you call it there? This is the pain in the ass um, cob right here to get off. Definitely the pain in the ass one. So what I'm going to undo right now is I'm undoing that choke from underneath there, but I need two hands. So I'm going to pause you. I'm just going to take the wrench and unscrew the choke out of the carburetor. All right, I had to undo the throttle cable on one side. I still have one throttle cable left to do. It just at least gets it set up there so I can work on taking this choke out if it comes out. All right, yep, there's a choke right there. It's on dual cable, the boot's all torn up, but we can fix that. I'm not worried about that. Just try and get this damn thing out. This carb is a pain in the neck to do. All right. Now we got the carburetor sitting out. 
and we got one more throttle cable left which is the uh, one for the other side and this cable right here has to be synchronized just so you guys know um, this cable right here goes from this cob to the other cob so you have one cob coming off your throttle going to this upper cob and then from this other linkage mechanism right here it goes from this cable down to the other carburetor and operates that one. It is a piss poor stupid design, but they did that because, well, there is no room to put two cobs there. And they have the same head on the same, on both sides, so they can't put the, um, whatchamacallit there, exhaust on. Well, actually it's twisted, it's a different, no, it's two different heads, but they don't have the intake on the same side. So, kind of a piss poor design, I think, but, you know, whatever. I didn't come up with it, so I'm not heavily liable, liable for it. So, anyway, I'm pulling it off the carburetor, and then I'm just going to strip it down and uh, put it in there, and what do you call it, the ultrasonic clean it, and see if I can get any crap out of it. I'm sure I can. And this carburetor right here ran very well. On this side right here, it ran perfectly fine. There was no issues with it. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to leave that carburetor right now. Um, that was already cleaned previous to this. I don't think they knew how to get that carb out. I think that was the problem. Um, and you just got to make sure that you synchronize them. Um, I might pull it off on the next video. I'm just going to try getting this one off and I'm going to see how bad it is on the inside. And uh, take, pop the bowl off and take a look. So I'll be back in a few minutes. We'll go from there. Okay, so pop the cob off and I wanted to show you guys too. Um, the, I knew this had to be resynchronized from the way it ran. But if you have one of these double cable setups, okay, I want to show you this. Unscrew it from the bracket first, then you won't have to resynchronize. I mean, you should always check it, but if you want to put it back together and have it be close, just pull the bracket off. Okay, so now I got, um, I'll show you where I'm at. I pulled the carburetor apart and look what I have found. Oh, God, is that shit look awful, huh? Well, that stuff's also in the main jet, which is a small, done the main jet. The edge jet is small. The, um, the float seems to be working all right, but I mean, it's got all kinds of crud on this thing. Let's look at this, hey? Okay. That's the stuff right there. I don't know if you see that enough. You know what? See this clean part of the table right here? That is what's going through the carburetor. That is why the carburetor is not running properly. That is the problem. I blame that. I blame that. I blame that. And I blame that. That's what I blame. So anyway, I'm going to throw this in my ultrasonic cleaner. And see if I can make this thing pretty and sexy again. Part of a dead giveaway is the outside of the carb. Okay. If you take care of your stuff, it's not going to look like this. And that port that I showed you, that, that uh, tube requires a, um, whatchamacallit there, a tube on it, a hose, which is completely missing, which also shows me if it's missing and the, the carburetor is under the tank, that tells me that someone's been in here before. So I'm going to stick a rag in the intake there so no debris gets in there. We don't want debris in there. Um, for you guys who don't know what Debris is, it's called Debris. But it's spelled Debris, so I don't believe in silent letters. Kind of like a knife. It doesn't, why the hell do you need a K, right? Let's get rid of that, let's keep that K and call it a knife or a kniffy. Anyway, so that's where we're at with this. So I'm going to, um, probably going to pop that bottom carburetor off too. If the top carburetor looks like that and they've been connected to the same tank, at that point, you kind of have to. If that carburetor right there was clean on the inside and didn't have all that crap in it, I would then keep that carburetor on there. But because I'm cleaning the carburetor, it's good practice if you can do both at the same time. And um, even though this carburetor ran good, I'm going to pull that cable off. I'm going to do the bench um, synchronization and I'm going to show you guys I'm going to do a video on bench synchronizing and um, we'll do that in a little in uh, probably in a day or so but for right now I'm going to yank this carburetor off and I guarantee it's going to have crap in it like that even though it ran good 
this cabaret is sitting this way, that one's sitting that way, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. Might as well just go ahead and, and bite the bullet, do the whole damn thing. Stop pulling it apart, getting it apart. This cabaret is not that bad to come off because of where it's located. Like I said, I, I put a new air filter in it. It was missing the clamp, so I used a uh, giant zip tie around it. It's got a little flange on it, so it would be secure. I didn't want to hack it all up, you know what I mean? So, let's see, I don't remember where the other screw was. There was two screws holding it. It was either two or one screw, I don't remember. I think it was underneath that um, coil. The ignition coil on these bikes are underneath the seat. Which is a pretty cool place to put them because normally you have those underneath the tank. This one's not. So if we get one of them spaces. We'll find that other screw. I thought there was three screws holding this thing in, but I could be wrong. The one there. One's supposed to be over there. Mm-hmm. Nope, guess not. Okay, well. This one's got two screws holding it in then. Or one screw. In the back here. Oh yeah, I took the other front screw out because I had yeah, it has this back one has two screws. I love these magnetic screwdrivers they come in handy so <coughs> pulling the back cover off is not that bad it's um definitely a lot better than pulling off the upper one that's for sure I'm trying to get this thing off because it is in there it's pragood you guys know what that means pragood it's in there Fight me to the end, okay. And there is the air filter. That tube right there with the spring on it is the one I was telling you about that goes up to that one that's on the uh, on the side of the carburetor on that top one, the upper one that's all kind of bug bug it up. You get fuel on here. So you off, and then I'm gonna have to fight with the choke on this one as well, I'm sure. I've never had this carburetor off before. I figured just do them both, you know? Get them both on the ultrasonic cleaner. Get them done. Pulling it off. All right, and then with, um, as always, you want to be gentle on the rubber boots. Go up and down with them. It kind of breaks it free. If you, if you can go right and left, this one right here really can't because of the uh, way the uh, frame is cuddling the uh, intake. But you don't want to just rip them apart because that right there is what cracks and, and splits the intake. So if you can find like a nice little leverage point where you can give it just a little, a little assistance. Go back and forth with it a few times because like I said, it, it's, it's in there. So you want to make sure your clamp is really, really loose. Make sure you loosen up the clamp that holds the carburetor in. So I'm doing this one-handed. Okay. There we go. Then you, I pried it up a little bit. Now I'm just going to wiggle it just a little bit. See if I can get this thing freed up. Sometimes you have to take the air box off. I don't think I'm going to have to on this one. Uh, but you never know. I might have to pull it apart. Okay because it's really, really close. All right. Okay. I'm probably going to have to pull the air box before I put it back together because it looks like it's going to be a you-know-what to put back together. Okay. Just popped it off the bottom fuel line. This is a bottom feeder. Right. 
Wow, these things are really in there. I correct my original statement on the bottom one being the easier of the two cobs. Um, honestly, it's just as bad. Just as bad. There we go. Popped it up past that. Alright, let's see if we can get that fuel um, throttle off. Sink carburetor. Got two lines in this one. Okay, I gotta put you down for a second and I'll be right back. Okay. So that is my Yamaha Virago. And I'm gonna show you why I drive or ride a Yamaha instead of a Suzuki. These are two completely different carburetors. One has the uh, neoprene um, floats, one has metal floats. This carburetor is a Hitachi. Um, this carburetor right here is a Makuni. Oh no, no, they're both Makunis. They are both Makunis. But one has the Hitachi style um, fuel, football. Anyway, see it in there, all the crap. So that's why I decided to go do both cobs at the same time as opposed to one. Even though this one was running good, I was going to go ahead and just do that one. Change my mind after seeing how bad that was and all what's going through the tank. So I'm going to uh, redo my statement from earlier. If you're going to do cobs, do them both at the same time. Don't play games because you're going to end up doing it in the long run. And that's why I did this video. And that's why I said what I said. So, those are going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner. They will come back and they will be clean. I'm going to do them up for an hour. After they're all done for an hour, I'm going to then pull the jets and take, take, a, take them back out of the carb. And clean up the whole carb. And then put them back in there for another hour without the jets. Clean up the jets and all that. And then for preparation for this thing right here, I'm going to go ahead and check all my, um, my chokes find out where the detent is I think the detent might be in here because basically when you pull it out it just wants to go back in see and I think I found out why I think the uh, I think the rubber boot that is broken is jamming up inside there and not allowing the detent so that needs to be addressed and that is where I'm at so um, if you have any questions please comment um, definitely, you know, a like and share the page if you guys are uh, working on a Suzuki Intruder 750 and you have some questions, by all means, please, um, please ask them. And, um, yeah, it's a nice bike. It just needs, it's been sitting since 2013. It needs a little bit of love. And like I said, the bike ran great. Jesus, I drove it, I drove it down there. You know, this is the yard right here. I drove it around here and gave it a good old one. So, actually, let's go see how the water is since we're out here. It's a beautiful day. Look at the sky. Look at that. It is absolutely gorgeous out right now. The uh, temperature's in the 70s. Um, it's getting hotter, but the humidity's low, you know. And this is... Oh, let's take a walk down to the water. Screw it. Got some time to kill. My uh, Kawasaki uh, Mava, uh, Mojave... I got all the parts and the pieces in there. I got to bring the motor in. Um, we call it there. Get that done. So I got some projects going on, people. I just figured I was going to pull the motor off the um, the TRX 250 today, and I said, you know what? I got to get those cobs done. That's more important than pulling our motor off for the winter. So this uh, we're in Epping, New Hampshire, right now, and what you're looking at is the Lamprey River. Um, this goes actually, if you take a paddle boat, you can go all the way to the park. We have a park, and uh, you can see how beautiful it is. And there are fish in there. Kind of a cool place to, uh, veg out and chill out. So if you guys show you that. I'm going to put tons of frogs, tons of turtles. Take you down here for a second. I'll just show where I live a little bit, huh? This is Epi, New Hampshire. 
and you are looking at the lamprey. Goes all the way down there. Nice little sweet spot. Nobody bothers you. Nice and quiet. Oh, he's had a fish bite. Oh, actually, yeah, sure you can see some fish right there. I don't know if you can see them or not. Let's see if we can blow them up. Right there, see them? This water is so freaking clean. Look at that. You can see the fish. They're good sized fish. Right in there, see them? See if I can get them a little bigger. It's kind of hard to see, but. Yep, they're in there. Good sized fishies. Good sized fishies. So anyway, thank you for watching. Please comment and um, what do you call it there? If you guys have any questions, please comment, like and share my page, and as always, please subscribe. Look at the fishies. I can't believe this, this is cool. I come out here, there's never any fishies out here. Take you guys, I'm gonna take you guys out here more often. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a fishy. In the words of Ernie and Bert. Yeah, fishy, 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 fishy. Yeah, right there. It's, 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 it's so bright out, you know. Right. There you go, I guess, yeah. Yeah, we've got some cool fishies in there. It's got a lot of them in here. Got a lot of fishies. I'm counting one, two, three, there's some over there. Four, five, six, seven. There's seven fishies over here right now. Just just kind of hovering around me. Is that crazy? But anyway, well thank you for watching and please subscribe.